It seems to have been a busy couple of weeks. Welcome back. My name is Amuna Yisrael, Solonomics 101. This is the intro to what is going to be a very interesting um, social commentary uh, by yours truly, Amuna Yisrael. This is, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this was done like two days ago by this brother here on the screen. And I use the term very loosely, who's chomping right now on a big fat piece of chicken. And it has gone viral seven plus million views um all over you know certain news outlets on social media and things of that nature being shared all over and when i saw it mm, i had to go to sleep and so basically listen to the link in the box so you can hear the straight video because sometimes when i do the people like let the video play okay cool listen to the straight video and then come back and hear my commentary on this video because now i'm going to chop it up so that's your homework assignment listen to the video it's about seven minutes and then meet me to where we can have this discussion what's up facebook so i hear a lot of black people on facebook talking about they want to move to africa well move your ass to africa i ain't going with you fuck that i'll buy your passport because you know what people in africa don't even like blacks in America, so I don't even know why y'all even want to go there. And you ain't even from there. You was born here in the U.S. All right, now, just as I promised, we about to break this down. So hopefully you watched it in its entirety. I'm going to go over what he's saying and then the deeper implications of what he's saying. Again, he starts off the narrative midway. Like anybody, furthermore, European outlets have picked this up and run with it as it relates to things he's going to say towards, quote, Black Lives Movement and all this other stuff. But you see the narrative picks up halfway where he's seen a lot of posts on Facebook saying people are going to move to Africa. Why? What's going on? What's the political climate? Anytime we see stuff, people are like, it's so viral. Okay, what's happening? Police brutality, as, as it always has been, is um, fresh in the minds of the people. The people are being re-traumatized over and over again, and they're looking for an escape from the abuse. They're looking to go to somewhere else where they do not have to endure this. So they're looking for an alternative. He says, you know what? You can go, um, but I'm not coming with you. And as a matter of fact, I will help you to go. So I'm not sure if someone asked him to go with them, but the automatic as, uh, um, assumption is, you know what? You can do that, but I don't want to do that. And because I'm not willing to do what you particularly want to do, I'm going to talk down about it. I, I have actually moved to Africa. So I guess in this space, I can really speak um, very candidly. And it, just judging by what he's saying, it, the, he didn't indicate that he has been. I don't know where he's sourcing his information. And furthermore, Africa is a really big continent. I'm going to talk a little bit like this. And so you have to kind of specify where exactly you're speaking about. Because the truth be told that some places in, quote, Africa looks just like some backwards places that people would think are backwards here in the United States. You have third world locations here in the united states and so this narrative that everywhere is civilized in the u.s that is not true there was a um a documentary done some years ago called the poverty tour look that up and you would think that you were in quote what they call third world nations but again for this individual who's able to just turn on his facebook live munch on his big fat huge looking piece of hormonal chicken um to begin to say certain things i just think it's very funny and interesting but anyway then he goes on to say you know what i don't even know why you want to go as to say that what is happening is not something that one should be concerned with and then he contrasts that to say i don't know why you want to leave here because people in africa don't like you again what continent what not what continent again what location in africa what state in africa are you speaking about are you speaking about egypt are you speaking about ethiopia are you speaking about south africa are you speaking about ghana nigeria like can you be more specific again this is like blaring generalities or generalities okay so and then he creates this false narrative he's a little bit in denial and i spoke about that before um as it relates to uh grief Everybody processes grief differently, how we're seeing or processing what it is. Some people have kind of like given up hope. Some people just say, if you can't beat them, join them. And in this case, it's like, you know what? I'm going to stay in his estimation. He's going to stay with the evil that he knows or with the, with, with the place that he knows. Basically, he says, I don't even know why you want to go because you're not even from there. You were born here. 
And so, so to say a few generations, when you rewind that, it's like, okay, but even those who wanted to leave, it's that hopelessness again. It's that um, you've tried and tried and tried so many times, so you might as well be complacent where you are. But let's continue to listen to what else he says. This is, this is, oh my goodness. This is the stuff we like. Seven million views of him just spouting a whole lot of um, generalities. But let's continue. So, and then a lot of people that want to go back, they use government assistance. Well, I hate to break the news, but in Africa, you ain't getting food stamps. You ain't getting no child support check. Why you think Obama's daddy went back to Africa? Because he didn't have to pay child support. Uh, you ain't getting no housing, no Section 8. Shit, you're going to live in a damn hut. And half y'all Negroes are scared of dogs. So I want to know. Why you want to move to Africa and you're scared of dogs? And then half of y'all need health insurance. Well, I hate to break the news, but in Africa, you ain't getting no damn health insurance because they got flies that'll kill your ass. They're not paying for that shit. I guarantee you that. So let me know how Farrakhan treats y'all ass. And you know what? I don't know about you, but he sound like, you know, somebody who be on the plantation. Like, I don't know why you try to run away to freedom. You know, Massa told me there's stuff out there that could get you. That's th this is what it sounds like. And this could be the reason why something of this nature, as opposed to the speech that was given on the BT Awards by Jesse Williams, that's speaking about what actually is going on and trying to do something uh, about it. This speech here, 7 million strong, shares Europeans clapping, everybody is, yeah, Hercules, Hercules, and carrying on. Um, wow. I don't know if he did a poll or a survey. I don't know where he's getting his numbers from, saying that half of the people on Facebook is um, on government assistance. And they have to consider this government assistance before they try to make a move because there, there are no food stamps or Section 8 or uh, free health care in Africa. <sighs> like I said, um, there are certain systems are not there, but there are also other systems that are there. Like in some places, a level of community, which is not here on a lot of levels. And the fears that he has is for everybody around the world. It's not just, quote, Africa. But again, he's not speaking of specifically, hey, I researched Zambia. I researched, you know, the Democratic Republic of Congo. I researched South Africa. I researched, you know, wherever it is that he's speaking about to say specifically, this is what I found. This is the kind of stuff that we have to really stop. Because when we get this level of disinformation, and then somebody, some young child, some, some budding adult says, yeah, I heard him say, you know, if you're afraid of dogs, don't go to Africa. Okay, so there are no dogs in America? What are the differences? Are the dogs in Africa like super beastly dogs that are going to just attack you for no reason? I mean, this kind of information is damaging on so many different levels and shows the people this is why they're not laughing with us they're laughing at the stupidity meanwhile when you think there's no value in africa say that to the chinese right now when when we left ethiopia was going over a major renovation and right now for those who have heard the dead bridges hotels condos everything that you can imagine are being built i was there for eight going nine months i never lived in a mud hut so this narrative, if you look at certain places in Ghana and certain different places, you're going to have ghetto and poverty, quote, ghetto and poverty or third world conditions, lacking of water and substantial food everywhere you go. If you look on an old, um, a older uh, series that was done, it's called the Poverty Tour in America you would think it was a third world country. So this level of ignorance in places like Mississippi and Alabama, where people are in food deserts, where people have no water, where they have to go and catch their water like it was two, 300 years ago. This thought and this complacency of I'm just going to attach myself to America because it has all of the um, fineries and niceties that I'm used to at the expense of everything else to me is absolute madness. He declared that the people are gonna live in a hut and that they're not going to have any insurance because the flies will kill you. Now, a lot of people know that 
for America and the, the medical system as it relates to emergency surgery and things of that nature, people know that this is a lot of state-of-the-art information here. But that doesn't mean as it relates to certain levels of health, as it relates to maintenance of a healthy lifestyle. Come on, have you driven by a, a hospital lately? Are the people healthier because they're on these health insurances? Are you healthier? When I when I used to be when uh, up in Connecticut by the Yale Hospital, have you ever driven past the cancer center and see how long the line is? This this thought process that oh, if you go somewhere else, you won't be healthy, you won't survive. Well, there are millions of Americans walking around with some level of ailment, whether it be cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, too much low blood pressure, thyroidism, obesity. I mean, the list goes on and on. Again, I'm just gonna try to make my way through the rest of this commentary so we'll be back let's listen to a little bit more of what our chicken eating friend has to say about all of the reasons why africa is going to be problematic for any government assistance seeking individual who wants a change in their environment and their atmosphere so let's continue let's continue yeah one more thing we cure ignorance not with you know harassing and attacking people we cure ignorance with information and so right now we're going to provide some information and then we bid the people go do your own research so let's continue to listen to what he has to say don't worry about police brutality brutality whatever you call it because they don't even got police in africa okay you get shot you just get shot okay your your husband knocked you upside the damn head you just get knocked upside the head and half y'all like to sue motherfuckers for every damn thing. So you get in the car wreck, guess what? They ain't got lawyers. They ain't even got no damn constitution. Ain't no such thing as rights in Africa. You ain't got no rights. Yeah, he said a lot. He said a lot. I had to stop it because he said so much in just that little clip. And I'm... Oh, man. Okay, the way we deal with ignorance was with information. He's not addressing how well a system works. Because if that be the case, the system that he's in defense of, one would have many questions as to whether it worked. But he's questioning whether or not they have certain things in place. He keeps saying Africa. I don't know what country he's talking about. So I picked three just for whether or not he sees this or not. He can get some understanding. So I looked up quickly. Few keystrokes. Constitution of Ethiopia. 1994, he says they don't have any constitution because the people don't have any rights. We, the nation, nationalities, and people of Ethiopia, strongly committed in full and free exercise of our right to self-determination, to building a political community, founded on the rule of law and capable of ensuring a lasting peace, guaranteeing a democratic order, and advancing our economic and social development. He said that, quote, wherever you want to go in Africa has no constitution okay firmly convinced and you can go on and read it this is 39 pages am I looking correctly 39 or 38 pages a quick PDF you'll be able to pull down the constitution for Ethiopia okay let me see if I can see any more fully convinced that the fulfillment of this objective requires full respect of individual and people's fundamental freedoms and rights to live together on the basis of equality and without any religious or cultural discrimination this is the country that I actually happened to go to Ethiopia this is why I had to pull Ethiopia as well because it's in Africa it's on the continent the last time I checked and a lot of the assertions that he's making I saw mansions there bigger than what I could probably guess he's living in right now they also had more humbler dwellings but that's wherever you go so this sweeping generalization is really annoying but i'm gonna see if i can read a little more before we go into the next country further convinced that by continuing to live with all rich and proud cultural legacies and it goes on if you want to read more about it um as i see the other one approaching here let's see another place in africa that he says has none this is the constitution of the republic of south africa 77 pages in their constitution opens up with a preamble we the people of south africa recognize the injustices of our past honor those who suffered from justice for justice and freedom in our land respect those who have worked to build and develop our country and believe that south africa belongs to all who live in it united in our diversity you could continue to read he says there are no constitutions let's continue one more constitution of the republic of ghana in the name of the almighty god we the people of ghana in exercise of our and it's a little small for me here 
it's a little small you see it um, I'm reading it off the computer as I'm doing it so you could definitely see and they're de making declaration in a spirit of friendship and peace and by the way Ghana is one of the ones who have a right of return for those of our four parents who through the diaspora um, was dispersed so definitely let's take a look at he said there are no police this scene looks familiar to me because again like I said it's burning to my memory but that's Ethiopian police um, I believe this is Ghanaian police, the same police that he says they don't even have police. They're all black. It's not about a white and black issue. It's about a power issue. This is looks like one of the officers because it has Ghana police on his breastplate. You understand? And these are also more police that he says these countries have no police. And if you get it hit upside your head, you know. So take your asses on back to Africa all you want to. Let me know how fair kind treat you. I'm going to stay here with my white folks. Okay, I got white friends. So. And a lot of people want to call me whitewashed. Well, let me tell you something here. I ain't whitewashed. Just because I don't blame the white man for everything, okay? Uh, just because you got nine kids, that ain't the white man's fault. He didn't push Tyrone inside you. He didn't. Uh, when your mama told you to get your ass up and go to school, and you skipped school and dropped out, and you ain't got no college degree, and you working at McDonald's, that ain't the white man's fault. You had the damn opportunity. So I'm still trying to figure out why we blaming the white man, why y'all blaming the white man for every damn thing that's going on in your life. Here's the part where you start busting into the church service, everybody clapping like, you know, I, I agree with him. You can't blame the European for everything. This is what the people are saying. Um, it depends on how you're looking at this conversation and situation because he named some things that if you say, where is the beginning of this? Where does the onus fall? Whose responsibility is it at this point? And who is the one who set this ball in motion for this to be someone's reality? And then he went on to say that the choices that you're making now, as it relates to not going to school, not getting your education, being promiscuous is not the European's fault. Okay, in present day, one does have the choices, but under what influence, under what information are you using to make a better choice? More often than not, there are certain things that people say, see, you're not taking personal responsibility. Well, not taking personal responsibility is not looking at the whole picture. Yes, someone can make a choice in today's time without any historical information that I see where that road is leading and I don't want to go down that way. Many people have done that. Many people subconsciously are making Making the choices that their foreparents made. And why did their foreparents make those choices? Because their foreparents made those choices. And so their environment instructed them that even though you're telling me don't go that way, your behavior is telling me go that way. Why am I saying all of this? He said the European did not shove Tyrone and made you have nine babies. Actually, he did. There was a space in time where actually he did. That was your requirement to be a teenage mother. And people don't like to hear it. I can't believe you're saying that. But it's facts. So if we're going to talk about now, nothing now is happening without then. You don't have a now unless you had a past. You understand? You ever see one of them movies and them soap operas and somebody is all knocked out and they come to, they don't, they're disoriented. Why? Because they don't have a connection to where they're coming from. And they spend like the next three, four, five episodes trying to get, help them to get their memory back. Hell, somebody's going to blame the white man because his car broke down. You bought that raggedy motherfucker. You didn't get an oil change on that damn car. The white man did not set that shit up. So I'm still trying to figure out why we blaming the white man for every damn thing okay then on top of this i want to know why if you was born in the 80s the 90s the 70s the 60s why are you mad about slavery it is 2016 going on 17. i'm trying to figure out what y'all mad for y'all wasn't no damn slaves i'm trying to figure some things out because Oh, oh, he's up. One has to wonder if he's really trying to figure some stuff out or is he just trying to spout a lot of madness. But to me, it seems that he's disconnected from his reality. Um, he's just dealing in the now without, uh, you know, a, a grip on the past and how it really affects now. I don't know really how old he is or you know, 
what's his objective, but it's clear to see it definitely isn't researching before you open your mouth. Um, he's asking why the blaming. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It appears that there is a you know, a relationship for me, it's a domestic violence relationship. And the reason why quote black people can't stop blaming white people because of the position they were put in, in this domestic um, violence scenario theory that I have as it relates to racism, white supremacy, slave master slave is that you are disempowered as an individual that still goes on today. And so that creates a level of codependence on your oppressor. And so, therefore, when everything goes wrong or anything goes wrong, then it now becomes the person whose full responsibility it has been to fed you, clothe you, and, and educate you or miseducate you. And so this is why it's like a child often looking and not calling us the people. Uh, just understand, if something goes wrong, they're not going to take personal responsibility because you have taken that responsibility from them. And you have told them that do not make a move without my permission. You have told them I am the ultimate authority. So therefore, um, coming out of this slavery mentality when master is the one who bundles the checkbook, master is the one who took care of those things, and all you had to do was work tirelessly without sufficient pay or no pay at all in a crooked system so that you can survive. He is in survival mode. The man that we're looking at right now, he's in survival mode. And in, in, in his world, if I say these things, if I go along to get along, then I'm going to continue to be able to go ahead and, and do what it is that I need to do. Um, the next thing that he said, and he had a question is, is why are you making it about slavery? If you were born 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you were never a slave. So why is this um, about you? Why are you making it about you? Why don't you just basically get over it? He's another one of those who says get over it. They come in all different colors, all different sizes. I'm not going to go ahead calling him names. I'm just going to describe his actions and his activities and what it is that he has put out to the world, basically, um, and how he feels about his own people. Um, he's the one who seems like, you know what, don't rock the boat. I want to be able to eat. And I'll take whatever it is that I need to take. Like he said in the last cut, um, he likes his European friends. He likes he likes that space that he's in. But as it relates to the blame game, I hear it a lot as well. It does has a root, especially again when you have this learned helplessness amongst the people, where it is that everything you try to do, there's a level of a roadblock um, there. And this is not imagined. It's very real. But we're going to continue to hear <sighs> what else he's saying. My thing is, listen here, the white bought the slaves fair and square, okay? It's called the slave trade. They went over there, traded y'all asses for some damn goods, okay? They gave the Africans blankets. They gave, the Africans gave the whites niggas, okay? I'm sorry, okay? The Europeans, pigs come from Europe. So, they took the pigs over to Africa traded a goddamn hog for you. Since y'all think y'all slaves, it was a fair and square deal. They paid cash for y'all niggas. So I don't know why you're mad. Because when none of you know damn slaves, I know that. You don't even know your damn ancestors. This almost feels surreal, doesn't it? Feel like somebody hired him or somebody's paying you to say some real crazy stuff. If, if, if you have, if you trouble with high blood pressure, take a breath at this moment. Turn away, drink some water, calm your nerves, you know, because the, the desired effect is to get you agitated. The desired effect for the individual and those who think, you know, yeah, he said, is to get you in that space. And you have to understand what you're listening to and who you're listening to. Um, he keeps taunting about not knowing why you're upset because he's totally obviously disconnected from any reality as it relates to ancestral so he's taunting to say you don't even know your ancestors you was never a slave i don't know why you're mad and why don't you just go along to get along like i am and and, and do your thing um he said the slave trade was fair and square again i i guess because of the left project i gotta big up the left project every time um this this reading that we have been doing he would benefit greatly and I don't even, I couldn't even say that. That's a big estimation, Muna. I don't know. Possibly he could benefit from listening and actually learning something about the slave trade. For, for anyone to venture to say that it was fear. But he does bring up an interesting point as the, the guiltiness or the complicitness of, quote, Africans or those who were 
involved in the slave trade. And this is what he's alluding to in my estimation when he says it's, quote, fair and square. The, the, the part that is not fair and was neither fair nor square was the stealing of people, um, kidnapping people, uh, abducting people. So essentially, the whole thing is based on stolen goods. If today somebody, and they have something like this, where in the street they get cars and they steal parts from cars and they chop it up and they do other things, is that fair and square? The person who purchases the stolen car parts and then they turn that around and, and sell it, is that a fair and square deal? Will you go or be um, judged in that matter in today's space and time as it relates to the legal system if you bought a hot part off of a car because and you know it was stolen you know it wasn't rightfully the person's possession to sell in the first place so this is what i find very interesting in him relaying this narrative to all of the heirs who are listening to absorb europeans of the slave trade because in his estimation it was a square deal it was fair and square they brought blankets he says for you niggas so again, we have to look into his eyes. This is why I keep freeze framing it. Look into his eyes somewhere along the line. We the people, his family, his community have to have failed him in not even educating him properly on the reality of how it is that you got here and the conditions. Someone allowed television to raise this young man. Someone allowed certain music to raise this young man. He's around a lot of Europeans. Someone allowed the European narrative to replace the truth. Because how is it now that he can look dead in the camera, chomping on his chicken bit, and saying what he's saying, except that the education that he had been given is grossly misrepresentative. But I'm going to go ahead and let him continue um, with what he's saying. Then you want to holler all this Black Lives Matter bullshit. And you know what? I know a lot of people that say Black Lives Matter. I know a lot of black people that leave their grannies and their mamas in a nursing home to die. But you want to scream Black Lives Matter. You don't even care about your damn mama's life. So when y'all move back to Africa... Let me know how Farrakhan treats y'all. Because I know one thing. People in Africa is moving here to the U.S. So I'm confused. I don't know why. People in China moving here. People in Mexico moving here. If America that goddamn bad. Why the fuck everybody moving here? I'm still trying to figure some shit out. So let me know how that go. Uh, how Farrakhan them treat y'all. And uh. You ain't gonna find no good chicken like this over there neither. You ain't gonna find a whole lot of shit over there. And you can't go to the dentist neither. Ain't none of that shit over there. Y'all always wanna ho holler about rights. You ain't getting no rights over there. But stop blaming the white man, okay? I got a white friend, shit. I don't drink with the motherfuckers because they get you fucked up. Like Cat Williams say. But I got white friends. They help me out. I help them out, shit. Hell, my sister even got white friends. And shit, they got e they all got each other's back, okay? But I know damn well I can't count on one hand how many Negroes got my back. But let me tell you, I can count on your hand, my hand, on how many white folks then help me out. So I'm just trying to figure out why y'all mad. So let me know. Oh my God. Let me know. Mm. You know when chicken so goddamn good, you can't even talk. So let me know how Farrakhan treats y'all, okay? I'll be here when y'all want to come back. Hit me up. Send your comments and shit. Share this shit. Talk your shit. But ain't none of y'all no damn slaves. Don't blame the white man, okay? Uh, the shit going on in your life, okay? Didn't nobody tell you smoke them, smoke them damn drugs and go to jail? Didn't nobody, the white man did not put your head down on the table and make you start that crap. You did that your damn self. Don't blame the white man. Because your damn baby daddy went to jail for shooting up Taekwon. Don't blame the damn white man. Blame the damn self. Pissing me off. 
All right, I had to let that one run out because this is getting really long and very painful to watch. Um, yeah, he said a lot in there. Some points or talking points that he said at the end was that, like I said, in my estimation, the community that he's saying let him down. He had he can count on my hand, your hand, and some other people's hand how many European has helped him, but he can't count on one hand how many of his own has helped him. And so this is some disappointment in the community that he's expressing through the support now of those who have oppressed the community and stripped them of their um, ability to to really come again together and rally against one another. Oftentimes we look away from the, we talk about crabs in a barrel, but who put the crabs in the barrel? You know what I'm saying? People are like, yeah, crab in a barrel mentality, trying to survive. Well, who in the world put the crabs in the barrel? Because that's not their natural environment. And so he keeps speaking as though this place that you are in is your natural environment and that you have all the tools to do that which you are saying the European is able to do. Um, another thing that he said, because you have to be balanced and fair in your assessment, is that people are out saying um, the value of black life. And a lot of people are pushing back on this, quote, black life um, movement. And he's saying he know a lot of people who do not stand by their own, meaning their mothers or their elders, in situations where they're no longer able to take care of themselves. And yet still they go to the front lines and rally for the lives of others. This is something that we do in the community um we we do say it matters but not over here it matters but only when it is police brutality it matters and then when someone brings up abortion we don't want to speak about it when when they bring up violence among ourselves they don't want to speak about it but the reality is these are outshoots of conditions um that we currently are in as a people that it's not like, oh, today you just got up and this is what you wanted to do. This is like, it started even before this, in those these tight quarters, in these spaces where there's hostility, where there's anger, where there's um, unrest. And even on, he keeps saying you weren't slave, but these are the same. How would you feel, asking this young man, if you were on the ship with, with laying in someone else's fecal matter and laying in somebody else's regurgitated, um, putrefying uh, throw up? Laying chained next to someone who is dead, laying in urine, laying in menses, um, you know, that condition of being in each other's filth was your introduction to, because you have to remember, these were not all the same people in the sense of they were not the same tribes, they were not the same languages. So your introduction to, quote, blackness, because before it wasn't blackness, it was your tribal affiliation, your national affiliation, your introduction to blackness is laying in someone else's filth. And so this is how, hey, how are you today? There was no formal introduction of, hey, how are you today? This, and we have to, he says, it doesn't matter. It absolutely does matter because some of those things have come down through the generations and, and, and you can't necessarily take it out on those who are oppressing you. So who else do you take out this? This is where he has to begin to understand energy and emotion and um, the spiritual realm because this is what's happening. They're not able to take it out on the oppressed so they, they turn it inside and they implode or they look to the next person that they can victimize. Um, so to say that the, this is not the quote white man's fault and he has nothing to do with it. That's for me, that's a very ignorant statement and it lacks a lot of understanding as it relates to history and as it relates to how the human mind actually works. Um, again, I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. Like I said, I had to take a nap on this. He said a whole lot. I said a whole lot and a whole lot of people are saying a whole lot. And I hopefully this video as all the ones that I take, cause I don't jump on every news story. If you notice, if I did that, I would never be off the computer. I don't jump on every news stories. I really touch the ones that I can really deal with deeply. Um, on a level where we can walk away saying, wow, okay, you know, I'll take a look into that. And so this is why whatever, when it jumps out to me, this is when I really address it. Otherwise than that, I just meditate on them as everybody else is doing at this space and time. So I want to definitely thank you for tuning in. This is Amuna Yisrael. Again, this is Solonomics 101 coupled with the Lev Project because we're looking at the soul injury that he has sustained as well as the people collectively. And the fact that he's ignorant or chooses to continue to be ignorant of the history and the past and how they correlate and interconnect. It's very sad that it had to come out this way. It's very sad that a lot of Europeans are using this as to say, yes, see, one of their own. Because this is why it really went viral, 7 million. Because, like I said, some major Europeans picked it up and used it as the poster child to why you should go against 
the resistance, why you should go against those who are saying, you know, this treatment that you're doing to me is not right, it's not just. Um, so we definitely have to look at what we share, what we think is just comical, comical in this world where everything is open up on the World Wide Web. We definitely have to, even though he's not us, um, in the minds of those who may be against you, he represents your voice. So you have to let your voice be heard in a respectful um, type of way so that, you know, people could get the message that, yes, he is one voice among many. And, you know, he may not be the majority of how we feel. But until next time. My name is Amuna Yeswa L. This is Solonomics 101.